While the rest of the world looks for the best green fuel, physicist Amory Lovin says the biggest part of the fuel problem has been sitting in your garage all along. The more I thought about the physics of the car, the more obvious it became that people were thinking about it backwards. Today's cars are big, fast, and powerful. But when it comes to fuel, there's something wrong with the math. As a physicist, I've been wondering why our cars use about one-third of a percent of their fuel energy to move the driver. Turns out, nearly 90% of all your fuel never makes it to your wheels. Where does all the fuel go? It's lost in the engine, idling, drivetrain, and accessories. Subtract all that, and you're left with 6% of the original fuel, which accelerates the car and heats the brakes in the end. Only 0.3% of the car's fuel energy actually ends up moving the driver. Amory Lovins and his green fuel team at the Rocky Mountain Institute went to work. There's so much waste out there today that we do feel smarter design and technologies can radically reduce that waste. They wanted to invent a new, super efficient car, but they didn't want to make it too small. If you do that, the vehicles actually become less safe and they also become less desirable for, let's say, American consumers that have large families. So how do you cut waste without cutting size? I started thinking about that whole new design space of combining ultralight, ultra-low drag with hybrid. That turned into the hypercar concept. They looked at every part of the car with fresh eyes. A big, big factor is the air conditioning unit. In fact, in some cars, the air conditioning unit is sized to be able to cool an Atlanta house in the summer. Like a green home, their car would have insulation and double-paned windows. Part of the issue with these efficient vehicles is they have to be designed to maximize integration. Car parts like seats would be integrated into the car chassis. And also provide a wraparound feel for luxury without having to be thick. If we can actually make the car lighter, we require a smaller powertrain. We require a smaller engine. We require fewer batteries. But their biggest fuel savings came, ironically, from the race car industry. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber has 10 times the strength of steel. It weighs half as much, but. Carbon fiber laid up by hand the way you, you make race cars is expensive. To use carbon fiber in a consumer car, Amory and his gang would have to find a new way to make it. Easy. They reinvented the technology. Just listen to the sound. Plastics have changed since that 60s film, The Graduate. Never before has carbon fiber been made so strong so quickly. At Fiber Forge, 50,000 strands of fibers are woven into tapes. Tapes become flexible panels. Panels are heated together. This one's about 20 layers thick car manufacturing at blazing speed. So this step is three minutes, this step is three minutes, and then the final forming is three minutes. So ultimately, you can make 50,000 or 100,000 units a year with this process, whereas it's really gonna be the highest volume composites process uh, in the world. Today's car frames require hundreds of parts, which add weight and fuel cost. The hypercar frame is made of 14 parts, which snap together. And this structure makes it immensely stiff and strong, and yet very light. There is a widespread perception that lighter vehicles are less safe. That perception, we feel, is wrong. The lighter weight car is going to accelerate better, is going to handle better, and is going to brake shorter than a heavier car. They cut even more fuel losses by tucking in the side mirrors making the tires out of a stiffer material. That minimizes flexing, which eats fuel. They even cut weight in the headlights. The result? The next generation hypercar, a vehicle that is lightweight and has plug-in hybrid capability that we think will get to market in three to five years. It will handle five adults in comfort. It'll haul a half ton up a 44% slope. Very brisk acceleration zero to 60 in about seven or eight seconds. It's an SUV that will get more than 100 miles per gallon. Now, car makers are calling Amory Lovins. You say, well, we wanted to make this car in the first place. Now we see a way to do it. Let's get together. 
The hypercar puts fuel hogs to shame. In fact, it's so efficient, it doubles as a rolling power station. Your car is gonna be sitting there with potentially a considerable amount of stored energy. And at that time, it might be more efficient to take that energy and provide it back into the grid. So it goes two ways. We call that vehicle to grid, and the plug-in hybrid essentially enables you to feed this electricity not just into the car, but out of the car at peak times. How does that work? Well, your fuel-efficient car would have energy to spare. Each day, you sell your extra energy back to the power company. And at the end of the month, you get a check. Imagine that. The car, one of the biggest fuel problems, becomes the energy solution. If you do a quick thought experiment, the actual amount of power that all the cars on the road generate is actually seven times the power of all the electricity power plants in the U.S. combined. So our cars represent a much larger power source, actually, than the electricity grid. It shows the, the revolutionary potential of these new cars to provide uh, energy in ways we've never thought of before.